Greetings once again from my YouTube film review channel, which is basically bringing you critical aperçus by the metric ton. I want to thank those people who have already responded to the call to subscribe. Your support for the underdog, me, is much appreciated. And for those who haven't yet, researchers at UCLA have found that people who do subscribe to my channel find that their lives improve by between 2 and 7%. And that's science. I want to talk about a rich beautiful and inexpressibly sad film called The Eight Mountains about the friendship between men who can't talk about their feelings and about winning and losing at the great game of life. It is set in the breathtaking and wonderfully photographed Italian alpine valley of Aosta, which includes the slopes of Mont Blanc and the Matterhorn. But the eight mountains of the title refers to the eight highest peaks of Nepal, a mysterious symbol of worldly ambition and conquest. Belgian filmmakers Felix van Groningen and Charlotte van der Meersch have adapted the award-winning 2016 novel by Italian author Paolo Cognetti and have created a deeply intelligent meditation on our capacity for love, how it is shaped by the arbitrary, irreversible experiences of childhood and by our relationship with the landscape itself. The Aosta Valley is depicted with magnificent sweep and van Groningen and van der Meersch find a stratum of sadness under it, a kind of water table of tears. Dear. vive sulla cima delle montagne, no? Però i problemi di noi comuni mortali non li conosce mica. Vorrei aiutarlo. Non vuoi aiutare uno che non vuole essere aiutato. We begin with the friendship of two 12-year-old boys, Pietro and Bruno, who get to know each other when Pietro's mum and dad, to get away from the petrol fumes of Turin, come to the fictional village of Grana for the summer. Pietro befriends local lad Bruno, who is staying with his farmer uncle and aunt. They roam far afield in this magical landscape. But after a painful division, fate reunites Bruno and Pietro as tough, bearded young men, played with subtlety and gentleness by Alessandro Borghi and Luca Marinelli. After a reticent, wary start, Bruno suggests that they spend a summer building a shack in the valley that will be their special place. It is not being too facetious to call this the straight, broke-back mountain. In building this rudimentary stone hut, the men have attempted to rebuild their childhood, rebuild their love for each other. But Pietro is to make a terribly painful discovery that in his long and bitter absence, his father actually became a friend to the grown-up Bruno, hiking with him in the valley and becoming a quasi-father to him. This is a movie with air in its lungs and love in its heart. It is spacious and unhurried in its devotion to beauty and to what it means to be human. Bruno is a compelling character who becomes impassioned when talking about the mountains, and it is perhaps his tragedy that he ultimately prefers them to human beings. This film has mystery and passion. It climbs mountainous heights and rewards you with the opposite of vertigo, a sort of exaltation. That's it. Please give this humble vlog some love on your various social media platforms. And of course, subscribe and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed and how this simple act has changed your life. And also, do I need to say it? Are you really going to make me say it? OK, please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. I shall be in Cannes next week doing daily vlogs from the Quasette, and I hope you'll tune in. See you then.